Today, a comprehensive guide on how to save your logo designs perfectly for a client, as well as some bonus tricks and tips too. What is up people, welcome back to Satori Graphics, the home of graphic design content right here on YouTube. Today I'm going to show you the 5 essential file formats that you should be using to save your local designs, how to save them and why they are essential. But also at the very end I've got some bonus tips and tricks for when you're saving your local designs in Illustrator. So stay tuned and follow along with Satori Graphics in today's local design tutorial. Before we start, to save our logo design, we want to make sure the final logo design solution is aligned properly on the artboard. In the Align menu, change the setting to Align to the artboard instead of a specific selection. We can then align the design vertically and horizontally so it's perfectly on the artboard. The first file format is going to be AI, which is the native file format for Illustrator. Now you should be aware of this and you should know how to save this file format, but you might not be too sure why it's needed. We send this to a client so that they can make edits and changes to their design at a later stage. Or maybe they can even pass it on to a different designer to use on a different design. In my last tutorial, I showcased a really cool function where we can actually save separate designs on separate artboards using the same document. This is achieved by checking the separate file option when you go to File and Save As within Adobe Illustrator. So to summarize, the AI file format allows a client to make changes to their design later, but also it can be passed on to other potential designers in the future. The next file format in today's logo design guide is EPS. EPS is a great file format for any logo design, along with another print ready file format which we're going to be looking at later. To save the logo design as an EPS file format, go up to File, Save As and then locate the EPS file format option. You have the option of making the EPS logo transparent or not, and I often do use the TIFF 8-bit option for the preview. If you have any problems with the design, warnings will be displayed at the very bottom. So maybe for example, you need to embed some fonts that are used on the logo. Once you've saved the EPS logo, head into the file location and give it a preview. Illustrator will actually crop the EPS file design right up to the edge of the graphics. And remember, you do have the option of making it transparent or not. EPS is essential for any logo design package because it retains a high quality, it's editable, scalable and also is compatible with right across the board. It is also very easy for a designer in the future to take the UPS logo and then use it on like a poster or a business card. In my design career, I've been sent many different logos in UPS file format to use on designs like this. The third of five file formats is actually PDF. PDF is awesome for sending clients progress documents of the logo, but also is very handy to add in the final logo package. So again, go up to File and Save As, but this time choose the PDF file format option. You always want to use the most recent version of Acrobat, and it's a really good idea to choose the View PDF After Saving option. Compression is often fine by default, and these are my settings here. But seeing as this isn't actually a print document, in the sense that it's not a poster or a business card, there are no need to look at bleeds right now. Again, any warnings or problems will be shown at the end in the summary section. When the logo opens up in Acrobat, you can set the screen zoom to 100% and then proof the design. PDFs are very commonly known and they're used for proofing and printing designs. They're also really easily opened on all kinds of software, but it is best to give your client the choice of both EPS and PDF for printing. EPS and PDF both support vector aspects for your logo and should be the two file formats that you use for printing when it comes to logo design. 
Now we're going to move on to the web-based file format options as well as the tips and the tricks at the very end. So PNG is the first of two web-based file formats that you want to send your logo design to your client. Instead of going up to file and save as, we actually need to go up to file, export and then use the safe web option. Here you have various different options and PNG 8 refers to the palette variant which supports only 256 colors, but it's usually smaller in size. PNG 24 refers to the true color variant which supports many more colors, but the file size probably will end up bigger. So keep that in mind guys. An awesome feature here is that we have a choice to make the background transparent or not, which is very handy indeed. I would personally send the client both a version with a background and without a background in PNG format. Once saved, it's always a good idea to check the file before we send it to the client because it's better to be safe than sorry. So with PNG, remember to consider the type that you want to use, PNG 8 or PNG 24, and then also remember to save the logo in both variations of having a background and being transparent. Before the bonus tips today on saving a logo design, we have JPEG. Again, we need to enter into the save web option, but this time use JPEG. With JPEG, there is no choice for a transparent background, but the one thing that you need to consider about JPEG is that it's lossy, which means that when the data is compressed, unnecessary information is deleted from the file permanently. This means that some quality will be lost or compromised when any file is converted to JPEG. Now I've got some awesome bonus tips that you want to listen to and take on board for when you're next designing a logo. Firstly, if you have a strap line or a tagline, or actually this can apply to the logo type itself, you might want to save the logo in two different styles. To demonstrate, take a look at the kerning on my strap line here. It's quite wide apart and it's actually set to 1200, which is quite wide indeed. The idea is that you save one version of the logo with wide kerning, so the logo can be scaled down to very small sizes and the text is still legible. And then you want to save another version with narrow kerning, so the logo can be printed up to large scale designs, like on a billboard or a poster. The concept is to make the text legible and still visually appealing any size. This is a great technique and it's something that you might want to consider for your logo design. Explain this to the client and package two versions of the logo when you send the files. The second bonus tip today is for those who have Illustrator CC. If you have multiple designs on one document and you want to save them as JPEGs or PNGs, you can save each design as a separate file using the asset export option. You can go ahead and open this in the top drop down menu and then simply drag and drop your designs into it. You will need to make sure that every part of one design is grouped together. So once they've been dropped into the asset export window, select everything and then choose your file format option. For the example today, I'm going to go for PNG 8. When ready, simply go ahead and export them and then check the file location on your computer. As you can see they've been exported onto my computer and I now have three different PNGs with just one export. Lastly, the tip here is really important and that is to package all of your logo files into one zip folder. This is because it reduces the file size when sending all of the logos to your client, for example in an email, but also it just keeps everything neat and tidy. To do this, select every logo file and then right or control click and zip them up like so. Once the files have been zipped, rename the folder and then you're good to go. You might want to package any font files that have been used on a design too. 
So there is today's comprehensive guide on saving your logo designs to send to a client. If you enjoy my content and you want to continue boosting your skills and your awareness as a graphic designer, subscribe to Satori Graphics for weekly graphic design content. Drop a like and a comment on my video and of course share on social media if you want help on my channel. I'm going to be back this week with more graphic design content for you all. Until next time, design your future today. Peace.